You want to know how to make some of the coolest art ever? Check out these artists to use in your prompt. The first two artists you can put together are Vasily Kandinsky and Jack Kirby. The first prompt, whales swimming in an ocean of lava. Here's artwork by Vasily Kandinsky. And what do you take away from this? I hope abstract nonsense comes to mind. What else can you say? Love the color, love the foundation of the color, and I love the flow and movement of the imagery. The way that the dark blue and the bright red are separated by the orange and the light blue, that's beautiful. This is a very unique art style. By the way, these are all on version four. I wonder how much the new algorithm will affect these artists. Here's the same prompt with the artwork done by Jack Kirby. Looks much more like a sign of the time maybe from the 70s, 80s, where the images are kind of rougher around the edges. Love number four though. Jack Kirby really incorporates the whales from the prompt into the art. Number three is kind of spooky. I think you'll notice maybe some alien vibes and maybe a little less variety in color, but still a slightly more coherent image. Now let's take a look at both of them combined. Here's Whales Swimming in an Ocean of Lava, artwork by Vasily Kandinsky and Jack Kirby. I love it. It incorporates the coherence of Jack Kirby with the color and flow of Vasily. You can't get better than that. Still abstract, but still powerful. Very beautiful. The next prompt I tried was a bull in future tech armor. Here's artwork by Vasily. Pretty incredible. Very realistic in one, three, and four, and then sort of anthropomorphic in two. Number two looks like the bull could probably speak English. The rest of them are definitely just a animal in some crazy looking armor. Super beautiful, super intricate. I was definitely surprised to see this. A lot less flowy movement than the whale swimming in an ocean. I don't know why that is. Nonetheless, this is what you get. Same prompt by Jack Kirby. Much more comic book vibe, and I think that's to be expected. But look how good they are. I love each of them. They're all in a slightly different style, even though it's all drawn by Jack Kirby. I wonder how Mid Journey does that, but I like the variety. I think initially I like number two the most, but the more I look at number four, the more I like number four. And here they are combined. Number two gives me a real dark side vibe. Look how intricate number one is. Like, it's got the comic book style of Kirby, and then perhaps the intricacies of Vasily? I'm not too sure, although if you want art that looks like this, combine these two artists. The next two artists we're going to look at are Boris Vallejo and Amanda Sage. I'm really happy with these two artists. Here's The Road to Nowhere. Pretty vague prompt, I wonder what it would do. And I would classify this as sort of dreamlike vibes, where it's clearly set in our reality, but just the rules of that reality are tweaked. I don't think you'll ever see imagery that looks like this in real life. Like, just that hint of dreamlike architecture is what makes these so beautiful. Now here's the same prompt by Amanda Sage. Just gorgeous, eh? I love her interpretation of a prompt. Now granted, this is artificial intelligence doing the work, but I'd like to think it does a good job at representing their art style. I think number two is probably gonna catch the most eyes, the swirling skies appearing out of the road. Like that's just gorgeous. Love the hills, so much movement in them. These kind of look like sand dunes, I think. Again, I'd argue this is more fantasy than dreamlike. I don't think anyone sees this kind of stuff in their dreams. But if you do, let me know. And here they are both combined. The AI does a really good job at bringing in the reality of Boris and the dreams or the fantasy of Amanda. Each picture is quite stunning. Number one kind of reminds me of a railroad track. And number two is straight out of like a post-apocalyptic Wizard of Oz world. Number three, a gorgeous winding snake way through mountains into the light. So good. And number four is just some really unique architecture with like a perfect circle underpass. Just, ah, oh, that's so good. I like this prompt a lot. Shout out to one of my buddies for this one. Here's the moon singing a lullaby to a field of sunflowers. Artwork by Boris Vallejo. Incredible is how I would describe this. Love number two, love how there are clear sunflowers in the foreground, followed by the field of them in the background. I think he does that very well in each of these pictures. Love the use of light. Again, I would call this dreamlike, where it's 
our reality for the most part mixed with more than a dash, maybe a teaspoon, no, a tablespoon of dreamlike visions. Here's the same prompt by Amanda Sage, and this is much more fantastical. Look how good number one is. The moon is surrounded by a sunflower. That is so good. This artistic painterly style is just the bee's knees, as they used to say. And here they are both combined. How powerful these images are. Her head is a sunflower. Like, that is so funny. And number one is just beautiful. I could see this on like a birthday card or something. Look at how the yellow mixes with the blue and then it's got green in the middle. Like, how does the AI know how to do that so well? Like, ah, that's just, that's so good. If you want a dream mixed with fantasy, combine the artists Boris Vallejo and Amanda Sage. The next two artists we're going to look at are Chris Moore and Anne McCaffrey. Now just a heads up, I don't know the best way to approach these types of videos. I don't know if I should use artistic poetry to generate these prompts or if I should choose something very specific and see how the artist interprets it. And I have to be careful on the words I use because if I use any descriptive words, the artist is going to draw that character in that way, I think. Nonetheless, I tried some interpretive prompts. Here's the Ascension to Terminal Entropy, artwork by Chris Moore. I don't know what it was going to draw, and here we find out it's going to give us some space-like architecture with a strong separation between the above and the below. I think it's beautiful, I think it's very concept art-like, I think it's very science fiction-y, and I love the composition. Just a zoomed out look at something out of this world. Here's the same prompt by Anne McCaffrey. So beautiful. Just like vintage novel art, sci-fi novel art. Is it? That's how I see it. Which one's your favorite? Love number one. Number two is really cool. Three is amazing. Is that like a yacht down there underneath this floating city? And then number four, so inspiring. Love the flat ground that leads up into this palace. That's just so good. And here is that prompt combined. I can't say for certain what it combined between the two, although it does remind me of concept art in number three and number four, mixed in with that novel vibe of fantasy art in like number one and two. Number one's kind of blurry, but I think that's just an early version four issue. Very beautiful. Highly recommend using these two artists. Next prompt is a log cabin on the edge of the moon, artwork by Chris Moore. Pretty standard, beautiful painterly look. I love the different aspects of the image. You know, the prompt says on the edge of the moon, which I pictured as being the moon itself, but these just appear to be log cabins on the edge of the moon. Like that is so funny. Such an artificial, intelligent way of interpreting the prompt. Brilliant. Like, okay, he wants it on the edge of the moon. We're gonna draw a moon and on the edge of it, we're gonna put a log cabin. Thank you, Mid Journey. Also, I want to point out, I love the accents. Here we have nice pine forest, but then this lone tree in number two, that's amazing. And the reflection in the water here, top notch work. Same prompt by Anne McCaffrey. And it certainly got that old school vibe to it, where it almost looks like a Bob Ross painting, right? I love the depth of these images. They appear to go on forever. And like the separation between the log cabin here and the mountains in the background, and then the moon even farther away than that. It's just such a good, such good composition and sizing of the image. Like each of these photos really gives you a glimpse into how someone could live a life far away from yours. And here they are combined. What do you say about these? Visionary is how I would describe it. I don't know. It still puts the log cabin on the edge of the moon, which I find hilarious. And it kind of puts them in these more unrealistic predicaments may be a good way to put it but then this cabin still has a support beam here which is hilarious i love these images and if you want something that looks like this use the artists Anne mccaffrey and chris moore okay stick around because we have two more groups of artists and i think they might be my favorites yet the first we're gonna look at are clyde caldwell and dan flavin the prompt howling wolf Keeping it simple, let's see what it comes up with. Here's artwork by Clyde Caldwell, and these are just stunning, aren't they? So well drawn. I could see these being on a t-shirt from the 80s. Like, so well done. 
Love the way the moonlight radiates the scene, the valleys, the wolf, so coherent. Version 4 is amazing. This art is amazing. Let's take a look at that prompt by Dan Flavin. Wow, mind blown. I don't know how I feel about using someone else's name in artwork and then, you know, selling it or making money off of it. But if I were to create designs, this is what I want the designs to look like. I don't know how I feel about that, but I feel like these pictures are amazing. This outline in number one, which, ah, so good. Damn, you just have an amazing vision for the world. And I am supremely glad that artificial intelligence is able to keep that alive and to perpetuate it. And look at number two. Again, the outline around the wolf with the colors. Number three is kind of interesting because it's so different than the others. It's not a very good picture. But I also like the variety that Midjourney can give you. Where in one set of images, three of them can be near perfect and one just isn't. Number four is also really good. I mean, maybe it's like a B minus, but the idea is a good idea. The pink, the orange, and the yellow, and then the blue in between, like that's, that's really good. And here they are combined. I think we, it gives us the wolf of Clyde and the colors of Dan, slightly. What a combination of the two, the really artistic flair of Dan Flavin and the coherence of Clyde Caldwell. Like, number three is hilarious. You got this, what's the word for that? This animated wolf just appearing in the sky with these rays of light around it, shining down the river waterfall thing. So good. Number one kind of looks like lightning striking above the howl. Number two is probably my favorite because of the different light that's shining, like and the water below that yellow, but then the light on this tree and this tree being different than this tree. Maybe this one is in the shadows and it gets that blue light. So good. And I really, really, really like the color in number four. What, what else can you say? After seeing how good Mid Journey did with the simple prompts, here's Battle Frog. Artwork by Clyde Caldwell. Very coherent. Look how good number three is. Can't you see that on a novel? Like, that is just so reminiscent of character art from like a fantasy story. It seems like Mid Journey still has a bit of a problem drawing weapons, but armor, it's nailed. Here's Battle Frog artwork by Dan Flavin. Now, it's a little different than I would expect. Quite different than the Howling Wolf and like quite different from each other. Again, there's one image that is not like the rest. One, two, and four seem to be all in like the same location with these tile floors and a lightsaber. And you know what, there's a lightsaber in number three, but it's sort of more like a master sword with like a realistic frog. Maybe Dan had a lot of different styles within himself. Still interesting to see here. What's it gonna look like when they're combined? And here they are combined. It seems to add a bit of a lightsaber look from Dan. And then I think coherence is a good word from Clyde. Or maybe that's just version four speaking out, but he's definitely more anthropomorphic. He's got the armor on. But then that being said, number three, basically just Dan Flavin. I don't know, what do you guys think? Number one's really interesting because it's like a guy riding a frog into battle against something over here. I really like when Mid Journey imagines a scene like that. I think that's brilliant and I think that's gonna go a long way in the future. And now we're gonna do something a little different for the last group of artists. We're gonna take one artist, David Burliuk, and we're gonna combine him with three different artists. You'll see why, but I think it really shows a lot of cool additions and how the formula between combining artists can work. So to start, we're gonna look at Oompa Loompa Land. Fun fact, you can't prompt Willy Wonka because Willy is a banned word. That's hilarious in its own right, but a bit of a bummer. Like, I wish Mid Journey was a little smarter that it could detect the context of a word, like, you know, Willy Wonka being a pronoun. Anyways, here's Oompa Loompa Land. Look how fun and colorful these images are. Look how inspiring they are. Very much children's book art here, I think. I don't know how I could request this as a feature, and I know the remix button exists, but I would love a way to explore more of these images, kind of the way Google Maps works. Like I'd love to be able to click a button and like explore down this street farther. I'd love to be able to click a button and explore down this street farther. I, I don't necessarily want to zoom out on the image. I want to go into the image. 
Can you make that possible? I don't think so, but I didn't think any of this would be possible. Let's just throw that out there into the ether. Now the first artist we're gonna explore with David is Earl Norm. Here's his Oompa Loompa Land. A lot less color. I would say not less imaginative though. Number two is really cool because it kind of looks like a factory. Number four is amazing because like you can just picture a bunch of Oompa Loompas living in a structure like this. Same with number one and number three. Very Hobbit-like, only the Oompa Loompa version of it. And here they are together. So good. If you want art that looks like this, use artwork by David Burliuk and Earl Norm. The colors of David shine through with a much more, I want to say industrial and... And maybe vertical is a good word to describe Earl's style. I can't tell you how much I love these images. I think they're so good. The second artist we're going to be looking at combining with David is Ed M. Schwiller. Look how good his Oompa Loompa Land is. So retro sci-fi, it's hard to believe. Like, love number one, love number two, love number three. It's kind of the golden hour, perhaps. Or maybe the sun is just setting. And love number four. Boy, does that remind me of Dragon Ball Z. Maybe it's the colors, maybe it's the shape of some of the buildings, but look how much of the city it gets in this shot. That composition, like that picture is taken from so far away. How does the AI do that? That is so, so good. And this is what they look like combined. Again, the colors of David mixed with maybe the composition or at least the location of Ed M. Schwiller. Ed M. Schweiler? Sorry if I pronounce that incorrectly. Thing number one is fantastic, looks like the Grand Canyon. Number two is hilarious because of all these characters. Number four is amazing because it really does look like something out of Willy Wonka, the Oompa Loompa Land. Love the green, love the different greens involved and love this spooky vortex in the background. So inspiring. Number three is trippy because it really looks nothing like you'd expect. Just seems to be a mid-journey quirk and seems to be in the number three slot where that happens. And the last artist we're gonna combine with David is Edmund Dulac. Much darker, very children's story-esque, but like a series of unfortunate events aesthetic. And maybe that's not even correct, but it's certainly more on the gloomy edge of a children's story. Can't you just picture the story that happens in number three? Why do I feel like I've seen a book with this exact aesthetic? And you know what? Maybe I have. I don't like to do too much research into the artist I'm using here. One, ignorance is bliss. And number two, I want to be surprised at what I see. I don't want to have any preconceived notions. I want to just talk about what Midjourney makes. And here they are combined. The colors of David brought with the gloomy architecture of Edmund so good on so many levels. I think it's the best of both worlds. It brightens up Edmund's pictures is probably a good way to describe it. Not as gloomy and not as fantastical as David. And now we have one more prompt to go through with those same four artists. Here's Space Astronauts from Another Planet. Artwork by David Burliuk. Is your mind blown? Are these not the greatest? Seriously? Can't get enough of this guy. He's up there in Don Might's territory. Same prompt by Earl Norm. A lot more grounded in our reality, our colors that we're used to, but still pretty dreamlike, I'd say. Like number four, super inspiring. And here they are together. It's got the colors of David and perhaps the feelings of Earl. Here's Space Astronauts by Ed M. Schwiller. Very sci-fi retro. Number three is amazing. Like this little face appearing on that moon. It's so good. Here they are combined. The colors of David. And I feel like the retro sense of adventure from Ed. Number four. Awesome. Here's Space Astronauts from Another Planet. Artwork by Edmund Dulac. Certainly different than all the rest. Again, perhaps a gloomy children's book is how you would describe this. Although, I wouldn't even say gloomy. These are just beautiful. Zoomed out, more of the environment at play. And here they are combined, the colors of David, and I'd say a more zoomed out composition of Edmund. Can't get enough of combining famous artists. What do you all think? Let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for me. All of these artists were chosen by myself, but I'm putting together an audience suggestion version of this video. Stay tuned for that and let me know what you think.